and your prayers start to soar through the ceiling because now you are effective in a, against that warring spirit that is against your family, that is against your business, that is against your relationship. Good morning and welcome to Time Out This Morning. My name is Jack Vint. And even as I'm speaking this morning, there seems to be a war raging in the heavenlies. And it's like a warring spirit has been released over the earth. And of course, I'm referring to the war in the Ukraine. Now, there's been many wars in the world over centuries. But what makes this war unique is that it has the potential to spill over and to escalate suddenly because of the various players that are involved in this scenario. So as you listen this morning, you may be saying, Jack, what can I do as a person? Uh, how can I be effective in this arena of war? How can I change things for my family? How can you change things for your family? How can you change things for your future? Or if you're a parent, how can you change things for your children? Or a grandparent for your grandchildren? And I want to show you this morning that there may be something you're doing that you don't even know you're doing that is making you ineffective when you're wanting to call upon God in prayer. And it's things that you don't even maybe know. And I want to show you a practical way how to change that this morning. And it's something you can do immediately. So don't go away. You need to hear this because I believe it can change everything uh, for your life. Now, is Vladimir Putin the modern day Hitler of our era? You know, more than 80 years ago, Adolf Hitler invaded Poland to start his war against the world. And you know, uh, Hitler suffered from a lot of paranoia, delusions of grandeur, and an extreme desire for power and, and, and for wealth. Uh, not unlike what is happening right now with the Russian leader. Because you see, this is the same devil that has been around for thousands of years, is still operating through people to destroy God's people because they were created in God's image and to rage war against God's people. And, um, you know, when Adolf Hitler invaded Poland, it was the beginning of World War II. So are you and I seeing something happening before our very eyes that could be significant in the, in the years to come? Are we seeing something unique right now because there's a raging war and a warring spirit? And these warring spirits are, are, are really two demons that the enemy has released. A, a demon of power and a demon of greed that's gone out and operating through people. Now you ask Jack, what can I do? I'm an ordinary person. I want to be effective. And I want to show you this morning something you can do right now. But before I do, I want to read a scripture in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. A scripture that I believe in. A scripture that you may have heard. But unfortunately, it's also something that people haven't always told us the flip side of. Because that's why we can't understand the scripture or why the scripture doesn't always work. So 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people, Jack, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We want God to heal our land. You want God to heal your situation, your family, your future, your nation. So how can you humble yourself? Unfortunately, it's not as simple as doing just that because there are things in our lives that prevent us from bowing down and humbling ourselves to God. And because of that, we are ineffective in the arena of warfare when we pray. So let me show you, I believe, these three things that prevent you from entering into God's arena and being effective if you are a person who wants to pray. And let me just qualify this to say as a leader, as somebody who's been a, a seasoned Christian for many years, I, when I pray, even today, 
I confess these three things always because I don't want them to be a stronghold in my life or even come in in any way and hinder my prayers. Now these things may not keep us out of heaven, but they will definitely make our prayer life totally ineffective. They will make your prayer life ineffective. So let me get to them right away. But before I do, 1 John 1.19 is a wonderful scripture. It says, Jack, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness or wickedness or wrongdoing, as some translations say. So God has made a problem. We need to confess our sins. Confessing your sin is called repentance. When you repent of these things I'm going to show you, your effectiveness will go right through the roof. Now, here's the first one. The first spirit that stops us from humbling ourselves before God is the spirit of pride. Because it's the opposite spirit to humility. The spirit of pride. And isn't that interesting that Satan himself struggled with the spirit of pride and was kicked out of heaven because of pride. He exalted himself above God. Now, it's not that you and I don't believe in God. Well, the Bible says even the demons and the devils believe and tremble. But that doesn't make them a Christian or effective. We can't just believe in God. We need to be careful that we don't exalt ourselves above God. And the spirit of pride will do that in your life it hides in your life and it says you don't have pride you are a humble person but it's lying to you repent and confess the spirit of pride in your life when you pray the second one is very close to this is the spirit of rebellion now that's also something the devil knew about because he rebelled against God and he led astray a third of the angels and they fell because of rebellion not only did they exalt themselves against God in pride but they also said we will not do it God's way and that's what rebellion really means I won't don't want to wait for God I don't want to do it God's way I'm impatient I need it now and so we become rebellious the thing about rebellion what makes it so powerful is 1 Samuel 15 23 says for rebellion Jack is as the sin of witchcraft when I practice rebellion in my life and I don't repent I practicing witchcraft and you know if you know what witchcraft is the practice of witchcraft is really the worship of demons when I worship demons a door opens in my life and they come and have power in my life and they make my prayers ineffective so don't allow rebellion to hide in your life repent of rebellion I'm going to show you how to repent in a moment of these things I'm just pointing out what these spirits are that stop you and I from humbling ourselves and then of course the third one which is one of the most dangerous ones because we don't always know that we have the spirit in us is the spirit of unbelief because we love God and we love what he says but we don't always love and believe what he says and so um, you know even the greatest man on the earth Jesus when he walked it said in Matthew 13 verse 58 and he did not many mighty works and he was speaking about his hometown Nazareth there because of their unbelief so unbelief and tradition can rob us of our miracle it can rob you of your miracle in your life in your future so deal with the spirit of unbelief it's not that you don't love God it's not that you don't believe God you don't always believe his word or his prophetic word and you don't always follow through on that so that spirit hides in your life now when it comes to these three spirits, spirit of pride, the spirit of rebellion or witchcraft or the spirit of unbelief, I want to encourage you and when you pray, see yourself in God's court because God is a court in heaven. He has an advocate called Jesus Christ and he has an accuser called the devil who wants to accuse you of these sins so that you cannot humble yourself and bow down. And so see yourself in that court and then say, God, there is rebellion in my heart. I repent of it. There is pride in my life. I repent of it. And there is unbelief in my life and I repent of it and I acknowledge it right now and as I do I receive your forgiveness instantly because of Jesus and the blood of Christ and the moment you do you're free and the enemy no longer has an accusation the advocate which is Jesus has cleared you of that accusation and your prayers 
start to soar through the ceiling because now you are effective in a, against that warring spirit that is against your family, that is against your business, that is against your relationships. Perhaps you haven't spoken to one of your family members for years. It's a warring spirit that's opposing you. Maybe it's your health this morning. But as you repent and confess your sin, I want to encourage you. A window will open, a window of blessing, and you will become effective. My name is Jack Vint. You've been watching Time Out. God bless you. I'll catch you next week. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with songs.